All right, this segment we're going to talk about connecting rods and all the different types of connecting rods and what they're used for and everything you wanted to know about connecting rods. So we're just going to go right on down the line here and just take a whole series of them. The first one right here is a cast iron connecting rod. Now, very few engines ever came with a cast iron rod. Most rods and most engines, most Fords and Chevys and Chryslers, a lot of those, had forged rods. Some had cast rods, though. Very few, but some. Um, the way you can tell a cast iron rod is just like on crankshafts. If you look at the parting line, it's a very, very thin parting line. If you look at it real close, it's almost stipply looking, just like outside of a cast iron block or looking like a cast iron crankshaft. It's stippled. Um, that's just because of the way the granite or structure is in it. Okay, um, next rod up is a stock rod. This is one of the new rods. This is made out of powdered metal. It's actually powdered metal that's just compressed together. So it's kind of a cross between a forging and a casting. They're kind of, kind of a new technology. Uh, powdered metal rods tend to be pretty hard. Um, these do have casting flash on them though. If you look at it, you can see along the side here, we talked about that in cranks. If you wanted to strengthen the crankshaft, you could polish those off and relieve the stress risers and casting flash. It makes the rod a little bit stronger. Uh, if we go to the next rod, this is a typical Chevrolet everyday rod, a forged rod. And what people don't really realize about Chevy rods is that almost all of them are forged. I can't think of a small block Chevy that actually had a cast iron rod in it. Um, on a lot of the Chevys though, you get guys buying the what they call the Chevy pink rods. And really all that was was just a stock rod, except it was magnafluxed. Um, and what they do with magnafluxing is they're checking for cracks. Uh, it really wasn't a different series of rod or anything like that. They came in Z28s. You used to be able to go to GM and buy the aftermarket, or not aftermarket, but the performance pink rods from Chevrolet. It's just assured that they weren't cracked. Now this actually is a rod that was run in an early race motor. I save a few things like this around the shop sometimes to show people. And someone has actually polished the beams on it they've taken all the stress risers off. And that's what it looks like when you polish a beam. Um, but it is just a standard Chevrolet forged rod. Uh, we'll go to the next one here. This is one of the new aftermarket rods. This is a scat rod. Um, these are made out of 4340 steel. Some rods, Eagle has some that are made out of 5140. That's the alloy of steel. It's 5140 or 4340. They're two different types of chrome molly. Uh, very good steel. A uh, very good bang for the buck on these connecting rods. These days, for what it costs to remanufacture a set of factory rods and putting good bolts in them, like ARP uh, rod bolts uh, or anything like that, uh, and resizing them and, and doing both ends and stuff like that, by the time you pay for all that, you could have bought a brand new set of uh, aftermarket rods that are a better alloy. They're lighter, they're stronger, they're just a better way to go. And of course, these are forged. Easy way to tell they're forged. It has a wide parting line and it's not quite so stippled on the outside. Now this one here has a different feature that some of the new rods uh, have. It doesn't have a stud and a nut like most rods have, like most stock rods have. In fact, if we look at this one right here, we can see it's a stud that comes through with a nut on the end. These right here use what's called a through bolt. So it's actually a bolt that's actually threaded into the upper part of the, or the beam part of the rod. Stronger design that way. And this one also is designed for full floating wrist pins. And when we get into pistons, we'll talk about that. But full floating wrist pins use a bushing, a bronze bushing on the small end of the rod. And that way the wrist pin can float around inside there. Um, uh, you don't have to press them in through the piston and through the rod. But uh, you can tell, easy way to tell that is if it has a bushing or if it doesn't. If we look at a, a, a standard connecting rod, there is no bushing in here, it's just the steel. And we'll talk about that when they uh, talk about how to install uh, wrist pins in the connecting rods. Now the next one up is a forged H-beam rod. And what this is, this is 4340 steel. Uh, it also has a bushing on the top because most performance engines like this and race engines that use this type of rod are almost all using floating wrist pins. It has giant 7 16th inch through bolts like this uh, that go through the big end of the rod. Uh, super strong rod. Rods like the I-beam rods, uh, such as this one here, these are good for up to about 500 horsepower. Uh, stock rods, I've seen stock rods in engines with 500 horsepower and I've seen them last. Uh, you're on borrowed time though, I mean I wouldn't really recommend it. If someone said, hey Aaron, build me a 500 horsepower motor, I wouldn't be sticking stock rods in it. Uh, I'd certainly go with aftermarket set. But if someone said, hey Aaron, I got some money, I want you to build me a 500 horse motor, even though these will handle up to 500 horsepower, the key word is up to 500 horsepower. 
I really wouldn't stick these in something making 500. I'd rather go with something that can handle 750, 800 or more horsepower and run a set of these types of rods. Now we talked about this in crankshafts uh, and the granular structure and the way cast rods and forged rods are, the way the grain runs. And the grain in these is running long ways. You want this beam to be strong so it doesn't twist or bend or flex or anything like that. And I'll use that same analogy again, just like wood. A lot of you are familiar with wood, where the grain ran long ways. Well, just like a connecting rod, you can see the grain in this is running long ways, just like the grain in a connecting rod runs long ways. Okay? Well, in forgings, we can, it actually aligns the grain up. In casting, it doesn't. They're just random. So with the grain running like this, if this is a long way of the rod, I can't break that. No matter how much pressure I put in this, I can't break it. If I had one with the grain like a cast rod, there's a cast rod, and with the wood like this, the grain's running crossways. Well, in a cast rod, grain's going every which way. It's not in a controlled direction. So with grain running crossways, just picture this piece of wood right here as, as like the rod beam. You're at RPM, you got a lot of load on it, a lot of horsepower, and a lot of force is being put on that rod, and guess what happens? Breaks. Okay, so a forging is a little better way to go, or definitely.